Welcome back everyone to another frame rated video. Today I want to talk about the RTX 4070. Mainly because I've been using this GPU for about six months now and I want to start a series discussing and talking about GPUs both old and new and so I figured my next video going into the RTX 4070 would be perfect since it's the one I'm currently using the most. And so today I'd like to break down the specs of the RTX 4070 so you can truly see how powerful it is at least down on paper as well as provide a little bit of benchmarks for it, discuss its performance compared to other options out there and who it might be best suited for. Now first up let's talk about those specs. So the RTX 4070 is built on Nvidia's Ada Lovelace architecture, which brings some exciting advancements. Here are key specs that you would want to know. First up, CUDA cores. We're looking at 5888 with a base clock speed of 1920 megahertz. It also can boost up to 2,475 megahertz, and it has 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory with a 192-bit memory interface and a 200-watt total TDP. Now, with this many CUDA cores and this much VRAM, with as fast as this VRAM is, this card certainly packs a punch, making it suitable for a wide range of games and creative tasks. Overall, the RTX 4070 is designed to handle 1440p gaming like a pro. It can dabble in 4K depending on the game and, of course, just demolishes 1080p. But you should be able to expect frame rates well above 60 frames per second, even with ray tracing enabled at 1440p. And for reference, we have games like Cyberpunk 2077, which easily gets over 60 FPS with ultra settings, including ultra ray tracing settings, especially with DLSS on quality settings. Far Cry 6 is also able to get close to 100 frames per second at max settings with ray tracing turned on. And finally, we have Arc Survival Ascended, which is able to achieve 70 plus FPS with high settings. Of course, this game scales its resolution down with the setting defaults to really pump up the performance at native resolutions. This game is going to chug on most systems. Now, these numbers show that the 4070 can deliver an immersive gaming experience even in the most demanding titles. Plus, with NVIDIA's DLSS3 technology, you can boost performance without sacrificing visual quality, at least at normal viewing distances typically, and really get the most out of this card. Another great aspect of the RTX 4070 is its power efficiency. With a TDP of just 200 watts, it's relatively easy to power compared to its predecessors and of course its bigger brothers, and you can run this card with a solid 650 watt PSU. I typically like 50% efficiency when it comes to my power supplies, so I personally would go beyond this, but I have seen and I know a 650 watt could handle it just fine. And let's not forget some features that the RTX 4070 supports that we kind of dove into earlier, ray tracing and DLSS3, which enhances your game experiences with stunning visuals and smoother gameplays as you saw in the preview footage. And if you're into creative work, you'll appreciate the card's ability to handle demanding applications like Blender and Adobe Premiere. So the card supports more than just raw graphical power. It has technologies that can take that graphical power to the next level, take performance and make it more capable, as well as support those creative folks or people who are working using it more professionally. Now the big question really is, is the RTX 4070 worth your hard earned cash? Priced at a $599 MSRP at launch, it sits in a competitive spot in the market when you compare current prices. However, we are continuing a trend where we're seeing GPUs go up seemingly every generation. Sometimes the value is better and you get more performance for the cost increase. Other times, it's not so good. However, I will say with my experience with the RTX 4070. If you are a gamer looking into future proofing your setup, especially at 1440p gaming, if you got a solid CPU, this card is going to deliver excellent performance and features for a long time. I was coming from an RTX 3060 Ti and before that I had a GTX 1660 Ti. So I dabbled with the ray tracing and AI upscaling a little late. I got the 1660 Ti before I ever dabbled with any of the RTX cards because ray tracing was new and so was DLSS and I figured I maybe let these technologies grow a bit and the next generation cards will definitely improve upon those. And I waited patiently. 3060 Ti was definitely a great card. However, once I upgraded to 1440p, it was a lot harder for me to run my games 
with the frame rates and the performance levels that I was used to, and I had to use DLSS more aggressively than I previously had. When you compare this card to the RX 7800 XT and the other high-end AMD GPUs, it's kind of a trade-off. You'll notice with benchmarks that some games run a lot better on the Radeon card, and other games they run identically, or the RTX card takes the lead. But one thing is for sure, and the RTX 4070 absolutely crushes when it comes to AI upscaling and the performance it provides, as well as ray tracing performance in general. Both of those things, now that I'm starting to utilize them more, are important to me. I guess we'll have to see what the 8000 series from AMD provides and maybe more competitive. So if you have the money and you are aiming at max settings, high quality graphics at 1440p with 60 plus frames per second for at least a few years to come at a minimum, then the 4070, I can recommend it. However, if you don't have 1440p monitor or if you're not interested in running everything at max settings or even care about DLSS or ray tracing, if you're jumping into the current generation, I can recommend the RTX 4060 Ti or even the 4060 over the 4070 to save money. You are going to get a massive upgrade with either card if you're coming from any of the mid range 10 series cards or even the 16 series cards and hell even the 20 series cards it may be worth it for some people to save some money and upgrade to a 40 series of the 60 generation of card. It really just comes down to what you're looking for and how much you're willing to spend so that's more of a preference. Are you going to grab a 4070 or are you going to wait for the 50 series? Comment below and definitely let me know. But that's all I really wanted to go over today in today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.